Hello everyone and welcome back to another MSI chess game by the first official world chess champion Wilhelm Steinitz from 1863 London. And this is one of the early chess games of Wilhelm Steinitz from his early chess career. In 1860s basically he was a very aggressive attacking romantic chess player and this chess game in my opinion is probably one of the greatest romantic chess games of all times and his opponent is Schleser, an unknown chess player, so let's see what happened in this chess game. Wilhelm Steinitz starts the game with pushing the e-pawn, so you can see that he's playing without one of his knights. e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop to c4, so we have the Evans gambit accepting and Wilhelm Steinitz is castling, so quick developing uh, he is developing very quickly, rapid development by Wilhelm Steinitz, attacking the center, bishop goes back, h3, h6, developing the bishop, attacking the bishop, bishop goes back, developing the knight, queen to e2 and black castled, e5, charging the center, exchanging the pawns and knight to d5, and now here comes queen to e4 and Wilhelm Steinitz is threatening checkmate, how to defend? So black is defending, pushing the pawn, and then Ampasan and knight goes back, capturing the pawn and also defending on h7. But now, capturing the defender, capturing back, but this time after attacking the king, queen to h7, black is escaping, king to f7. What would you do in this position if you had, if you had the white pieces? So Wilhelm Steinitz played a very good move. There is a move which is asking to be played, so if you if I give you a couple of seconds, can you guess the next move of white? What would you do in this position? Well, of course, cutting the escape square, rook from f to e1, and we have bishop to e6, blocking the file and developing the bishop, but in this position, if let's play a silly random move, then can you see the best move for white? Let me give you a couple of seconds uh, to pause the video if you need, which is a very simple move. So can you see the immediate threat because after that move there is no defense for black. Okay, the move is bishop to g6, check. And where is the king going? The queen is cutting the escape square and also the rook is cutting the escape square, so you can only take the bishop with the queen, this is the only move. Then here comes knight to e5, forking the king and the queen, and this is losing the chess game, capturing the queen, and that's all over. So in this position we have rook from f to e1, and Wilhelm Steinitz is threatening to play bishop to g6. So, defending bishop to e6, and then checking the king, and where is the king going? The king has to go to the e-file, king to e8, and then knight back. Black had enormous pressure on f2, but now knight goes back, attacking the queen, and this bishop is pinned. But now bishop takes on f2, check, and watch this brave, brave move of Wilhelm Steinitz. Not king to h1, but king to f1. Wilhelm Steinitz says, come on, move the bishop and make my day, like Clint Eastwood in the Dirty Harry movie. And Black didn't move the bishop and didn't make the day of Steinitz. If moving the bishop, that is going to be check, okay, there is discovered check, but then knight takes queen, check. <laughs> this bishop is pinned, you can take this naughty knight. So, what would you do in this position, seriously? After thinking hard, this is what black played queen to e7, but let's check out the other variations. If queen to f7, then bishop to g6, pinning and winning. And if queen to f4, then simply capturing the bishop bank, king to d7, and then rook to e4, attacking the queen, still you can't move the bishop, because if you move the bishop, capturing the queen with rook, what a move by Wilhelm Steinitz, king to f1, queen to e7, defending the queen, but this is 
actually not defending anything because Steinitz simply captured the bishop. Now the material is equal but black has two extra pawns, Wilhelm Steinitz, don't forget that he surrendered one of his knights in the beginning of the game. So king to d8, lining the rook with the king. And I want to play a random move in this position, why black played king to d8, so that we can understand the idea of Wilhelm Steinitz. So let's play a random move. Can you see the best move in this position if you had the white pieces? So let me give you a couple of seconds. If you need, you can pause the video. That's a very simple move actually. Of course, rook takes bishop is the move. Because if queen takes rook, then rook to e1, pinning and winning. So this is very good for white. So this is why king to d8, black didn't want rook sacrifice, uh, exchange sacrifice and winning the queen. But now lining the rook with the king, still escaping like a chicken, unpinning the knight. Queen to c5, still pinning the knight. So black says, bishop for the knight. Steinitz captured the bishop. Queen takes on f2, king to h1, queen to g3. And in this position, at this moment of the game, Wilhelm Steinitz, he announced fourth checkmate in five moves. What an epic chess player. So let me tell you. What would you do in this position seriously? Wilhelm Steinitz played the move and Black resigned. Consider this as a very beautiful daily chess puzzle because after that move, White is simply winning and Black has no good defense. Black is basically dead after that move. So let me give you a couple of seconds. If you need, you can always pause the video. It is White to move and win. Wilhelm Steinitz, he played queen to f5 and black resigned. What a move by Wilhelm Steinitz. Let's check out the possible continuation. If accepting the queen sacrifice, then here comes rook to e8, check. The only move and then double check, bishop to b5, check, mate. Incredible. And after queen to f5, if defending the rook then, then rook to e8. Whatever black does, black is getting checkmated. This is discover check, moving the king, the only move. And then capturing the rook, checkmate. Oh yeah, what a game by Wilhelm Steinitz. So did you see this move? Queen to f5, and that's all she wrote. So thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you next time with more interactive chess games like this one. So take care, stay safe and bye bye.